Hey, hey, welcome back, guys. A new Shed Tour episode. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I've got Brayden and myself. It's just the two of us for this trip, but we're pulling out what we have left of food and snacks because we're going in for another uh, big push, this time focusing on elk sheds, just like we were last time. If you watched last video, uh, thanks for watching, but if you missed it, we find some bomber mule deer sheds. So for those of you who like mule deer, if you missed last episode, go check it out. But yeah, it's kind of the same program. Get our our packs full of food and gear and get down into some country and try to find elk sheds this year's been pretty tricky we've been talking to a lot of other shed hunters out here who are struggling as well we're just the bulls are not in their normal locations they're scattered when you would think with the high snow it would be opposite and i'm finding out with the high snow that they're even harder to find so we're going to load up our packs we're going to bomb down to camp and start picking them up let's go oh always saving our tracks guys one thing I like to use on Onyx is a track going in because we've never been exactly where we're going. That gives us a time frame of what it's going to take to pull out, plus maybe a little if we're stacked down with sheds. But track is like number one. Saving your offline maps is number one. Starting to track where you're going, dropping pins where you find sheds. Those are kind of the key features I like to use on Onyx. My name is Eric Chesser, and welcome to Shed Tour, a video series dedicated to getting outdoors, spending time with old friends, making new ones, but more than anything, searching for these things, shed antlers. I started shed hunting as a teenager over 25 years ago. It's my favorite thing to do outdoors, and still to this day, I'm just oh, as excited to find guys. an antler as I, I was back then. I had a heart attack. Like, I'm in shock. We're finding Sit them back and enjoy another episode of the Shed Tour. Like I said on these other episodes, guys, it's been a tough year for locating the bulls and exactly where they wanted to go and hang out and shed their antlers. So we're not, we're trying not to overlook anything high or low, but I would have to guess that they're gonna be more low. Uh, so we're dropping down from here, but before we do, just taking a quick look with the binos seeing if we can't just get lucky i mean it's always nice when you can glass one with the binos usually it leads you to more and it confirms that you know elk were there and that you're you're heading in the right direction so we'll give this a quick glass take a breather and then we've got a pretty good push down this canyon that i'm pretty excited for i'm gonna go lower than we've ever gone <laughs> in hopes that we find sheds that we've never found and bulls and little pockets that we've never hit yet it's time to ditch the pack Let's see what the heck we can find in here there's no elk tracks which kind of confirms that they're probably a lot lower i think that's probably the best idea for today is kind of go low and just check sign and tracks and see what we can find but probably two hours and 45 minutes nope two and a half hours and 3.78 miles so pretty solid just getting in here and from here it's just go wherever the tracks take you so let's go see what we can find uh, trying to make a cool relaxing clip for you guys but I can't stand up straight. Anyway, sweet waterfall. I'm gonna start my day with some pineapple. This stuff, uh, I really grown to like this pineapple flavor. 
Well, we're gonna see if we can find where these bulls went and shed, what bulls were down here, and learn some new country. I don't know what it is about bombing in and sleeping back here. It's kind of been my favorite way to do it. I love any type of shed hunt, but the idea of coming in, sleeping, being waking up in the zone, and uh, you know, learning every single day, trying to figure out where the browns are, it's just kind of fun. So it's a lot more than the sheds. It's the adventure, sleeping under the stars, the trials, the weather, everything that goes with it. But I hope that on this trip I can pull out five sheds out of here. And I would love to find a nice set, hard white or brown. It's kind of my goal. Just walked by this thing. <laughs> I don't know what made me turn around. Might have caught some uh, some white in the rear view side peripheral, but that's an antler, piece of antler off last year. Maybe even two years ago. Big old chunk of bone, might make some good dog chews. I think I'll pack it since we got nothing else to carry. But we're just getting started, guys, and there's elk sign all the way down here. So I would assume that there can be sheds this low, especially on a year like this. So I'm gonna post up in glass and uh, see if we can't pick one out in the vortex. And I got something that looks suspect. At least it looks suspect. I can tell it's an antler now. <laughs> Finally. Not really in fresh track, but I've been really hoping I can scoop a white or two. And it looks like we got a white one. Let me zoom in on it for you guys. Pretty tough to see, but dead center, probably on a big screen, you guys can see that. A left antler. Looks decent. We are on the board, baby. Let's go. Pretty wild, because I glassed this side. Back there on that other ridge. But man, when they're tucked in the brush like that, they're tough to see. Yeah. Dang it, it's old. Chalk, chalk, chalk city. Super old. We're going to leave that one there. I've been working this super long freaking crappy canyon forever now and I just jumped I think 30 head of cow elk and then I saw two of the biggest coos deer bucks I have ever seen in my life one had like a crazy big cheater we're just gonna keep our way down this canyon and it's gonna suck hiking back up towards camp but I really want to get to this lower stuff to see if there's if this is where the bulls are shedding because there's lots of sign right up on this face I don't think enough for there to be crazy amount of browns right here so I'm just gonna keep cruising trying to glass and see what happens well been glassing for a bit and already have two antlers spotted one low and one high they look kind of like garbage but uh i'm gonna mark mark them on onyx and maybe on my way as i pull out of here i'll go check this higher one and maybe just try to get closer to glass this lower one but um yeah i, I don't see any fresh elk sign here so just glassing and moving Dang it, too late for this one. Holy cow, this would have been a big bull. I think we're getting into some elk sign. Possibly some beds here. Look at that. Dang, big, heavy, triple brow with palmated back end. Whoo, thing could have been a smoker. I know it would have had big fronts. I don't think it would have had much in the back end being palmated like that, but man, we're, we're where elk have been, but not this year. This looks like it could be this year's track and a bed. So if we're lucky, we can get into them. There's a rub right there, but yeah, guys, we're not having the best day. It's pretty rough, but just found that monster, so you know they're in here at some point. It's like 2.30, I'm still an elk sign, and I just glassed up six shed bulls. They're quite a ways below me. I'm probably an idiot for dropping any more elevation than I already have. But with the comfort of Onyx, I definitely know I can find my way back to camp, but it's gonna be a dang push out of here. But there's six shed bulls, and I started glassing around. I knew it would be far away, but I started glassing around looking for sheds and I spotted a white one below them. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be in good condition or just another chalk, but I'm gonna try to just get at least a little bit closer to see if I can't 
tell if they've recently shed or shed a long time ago. I don't think I'm gonna cross the canyon today, but at least we're headed in the right direction. Got some shed bowls, so that's good. Guys, you will not believe it. I've been hiking so freaking long today with absolutely nothing to show for it. I'm not 100% sure what Eric has been finding, but look what I just found. I cannot believe it, honestly. Boom! A freaking brown six point. Like, how is this even real? Like, it's already been chewed on, so it's been here for a minute. Oh, I can't believe that. A little brownie all the way in here. It is crazy. I mean, look how thick it is. I was just on my phone talking and I was coming right here and I looked down. <laughs> it's just I walked right by it. Well, as you can tell, it's a little bit thick in here. I'm so sad. This nice brownie's already been grubbed on. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Just an awesome little six point brownie. Holy crap, I can't believe I'm picking up brown right now. I've been just, as you can tell from the few shed tours I've been in, I've just been loading up on all the chalk and we got us a little brownie. <laughs> yes. Dang. A lot can happen that fast. So I found that brown six just right down this hill about 30 yards. It's actually just right here and I've been doing kind of a few zigzags, loops, and then I come right here. And let me hurry and unlock this. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the other side though. I don't remember what side it was. You guys might know what side it is before me. But I think that is, oh my heck. Brownies look so good. I mean, so good. Yeah, that's for sure the match. Just an awesome little sixer. My first brown set, I actually kind of did some loops and <laughs> We got it. This one's not chewed on, but yeah, it's definitely the match. Heck yeah, I'm so happy. Freaking awesome brownie set. And the cool part is, is there's freaking, I think 10 shed bowls just right over here. So there's gonna be a lot of browns around here. Well, I grabbed the match. Now let's put them together for the first time in a while. That makes me so dang happy. Just have a solid brown match. Not a bad bull at all. Just a cool little sixer. We'll freaking take it. Sadly, that one's been chewed on a little bit, but nothing crazy. Hopefully you guys can see that. Ow, that thing whacked me, but. Not a bad little bull. Just crossed the creek to where these bulls were. I was kind of watching them from a distance, hoping I can just take a look at them. And they kind of just single filed up the hill and got out of here. So I figured I'd come get this white shed. And then saw an elk carcass right here. Just walking up to it right now. I don't see any antlers on it, but I figured we better go check it out. I wonder if somebody shot a bull on a late hunt. Yeah, there's no legs. Oh, well, that's funny that that's right there. I'm sure if somebody killed that, which it looks like, they probably left this. So, nothing worth keeping. And we got a big push. All right, we got a lot of dry grass, so we're gonna try our luck with it. We got like the cabin style going on. Might need a little air under there, but. Ooh, <laughs> stuff goes quick. Wait. Hopefully it'll be hot enough though, not too fast. Yeah. 
Man, it is just too fast. Man. Come on, baby. We burn out our fire ring, anyways. Lightheaded. <laughs> we got a mattress. Now I need to try to, to determine if there's up or downhill. I'm gonna use a water bottle, watch this. So there's gonna be an air bubble in there. Freaking water Dude. bottle level. Level. I guess whatever way I wanna face in the morning is when I wake up. Do I wanna see that mountain or that mountain? I think I wanna see that mountain. So head up, it is. Well, we are uh, back where I was yesterday. Here's nature's drinking fountain, I'm calling it. Um, we're just gonna bomb to where we saw the bulls and try to go lower, so we packed up our camp and we're dropping a ton of elevation. Not sure if we're gonna regret this. There's gonna be two, two outcomes of this. We get completely worked, like I did yesterday, um, which Braden didn't, by the way. He got a nice set. Or we uh, fill the packs up with some nice browns. We're trying to figure out where those bulls shed. There's 10 of them, so I'm sure they're gonna be somewhat spread out, but if we get down there and put our time and energy into the low stuff, I think we can scoop a few. So we uh, stopped to get water, and now we're just kind of backtracking the way we went in yesterday, because it's really the only way around these big cliffs. Um, right below us, we're cliffed out right here. So we had to stay high for a couple canyons, and now that we get on these finger ridges, uh, we're gonna just drop elevation guys so wish us luck we need it we got a full day today and we're gonna have at least seven hours kind of down low i hope we can find them like i said on another episode this stuff's like a game and with the high snow year everything's different it's not normal so we're just trying to put the puzzle pieces together and find where these elk shed so let's try not to slip and fall We're getting down here now. We're two miles in and an hour and a half. It's 10 a.m. I haven't found an elk shed, but just spotted a coos deer deadhead. Hopefully it's in decent enough shape to want to take it. I'm getting quite the little collection of these things. I seem to be in good coos deer territory out here. Eh, a little chalky. Chalk, chalk, chalk. I don't know. It's not too bad. Huh. Might throw it on the pack. Because I got nothing else going on. So, let's do that. We'll at least take it to camp and make some decisions up there. After we see what we find today. But, cool little guy. Lots of coos deer in this country. Well, here goes nothing, given the rest of the day. 
effort in this uh, general area. We just ditched camp and I'm just splitting up from Braden. Took a bit to hydrate and get some food and now we're just gonna work this stuff. This is uh, right here where Braden found the browns and where the bulls were. So with a little luck, I think we'll get into them, but it's not gonna be easy. There's elk track going up this trail, but they're pretty dang fresh. So um, I'm gonna walk the spine. I like to walk the spine so I can glass both sides. I can check for tracks and sometimes you get lucky and find a shed right on the little benches or right on the spine. So let's get working this stuff again, brushy and thick, but there's gotta be something in here, guys. Let's go find it. First shed of the day. It's a pretty big coos shed. Yeah, that's a pretty stud deer. Try to get in the light a little better. Gosh. But not bad at all. Probably my biggest coos shed I've ever found. Just pretty good mass on it. Good eye guard. A few years old, probably two years old. I'm just getting into like a lot of elk sign in here. And then I looked down and found it. So I'm hoping I can zigzag some of this stuff and find an elk shed. It looks pretty dang good. Well, I just posted up to glass on this ridge. It's pretty dang windy and I'm 90% sure I just glassed a brown elk shed across the canyon. So I think it's an elk shed, guys. I sure hope it is. But I'm going to keep glassing because it's actually pretty good light right now on that side. And I can see a lot of country. It's just... This wind is making it hard to hold my binos steady, which I'm using my hiking stick just to hold them steady. But if I can try to get some footage through the scope on this brown, I'll, I'll do that for you guys. But uh, I think I'm just going to post up here and see what I can glass. Braden just found a nice deer shed, so at least we're on to something. But like I said, there has to be more elk sheds in here, so I'm going to get after it and see if I can't get lucky and glass another one. Got an angle on that shed. It seems to be a left side decent six point and there was two bulls to the left of it a little ways and they got up for a midday snack and kind of fed off so I dropped down in this creek bottom and I'm gonna slide up here it's about a third of the way to the top I'm gonna go snag this shed so I'm pretty stoked you know we knew it was a risk coming down here but with all the shed bulls we figured you gotta be somewhere and decided to glass and it paid off. So let's go get this thing and then find its match. I started getting into a whole bunch of signs. So I think I'm gonna drop my pack right here, mark it on Onyx and start doing a whole bunch of zigzags. There's just insane amounts right here. So like I said, there's just sign everywhere. Old, like super old sign, super fresh sign. And then in the age that I think I'm I think they started shedding that just because of my brown set and the age of the crap when I was looking at it. So that's what we're gonna do. I hope it works out. I guess we'll see in a few hours. How about that guys? Boy does that feel good. I needed something. Cause I'm getting worked for the miles. A nice solid six, nice and brown. So let's get the pickup for you guys. <laughs> Pretty sweet man. That feels good seeing that. Looks like it has been shed for a while. It's definitely dried up. They're in here. I think I'm gonna try this side hill. See if I can't find the match. Oh yeah. Nice solid brown, guys. The set Braden picked up brown and this one are both just really decent six points. This one's really got some chocolate color on the back and 
But yeah, you look at this, got a decent burr, so it's not a super old bull, but he was way down here living in this low stuff. It's got potential just to be a nice bull with that really typical frame. Chocolatey brown, just, just like we like. Check out the burr of that thing. Nice, kind of cool color with some texture there. But yeah, that thing's got blood on it, but it's all dried up. This has been there for a minute, so let's go see if we can't find the match. It's a coos day. Got me a little chalker. That's awesome, though. I never find coos sheds. So that's freaking awesome. I think it's a coos. It's gotta be. But it's number two for the day. And both coos. There's gonna be an elk shed in here though. Somewhere. Oh shoot, I've been zoomed in. That's my bad. There we go. Now you can see it. Nothing special. Just a little coos. Well, I just got over the top of the next canyon, glassed across, and spotted another elk antler. I can tell it's a right side. I can't tell if it's brown or white or chalk because the sun's hitting in a really weird way, but there's definitely an antler on that other side, so I'm going to keep glassing and probably go scoop it here after uh, taking a look, but I'm doing better. Oh man, that was funny. I was sitting there thinking I better take the vlog camera out to do an update because I'm going to go get those sheds as I'm reaching for the freaking camera. I spot those. I've been saying I want a side-by-side -side set. We got one on top of each other finally. Man, this bull is down here and I'd say those are possibly last year's, possibly two years old, but there is this set right here then a single that I can't quite figure out what's going on. It's a right side, but I can't tell if it's white or brown. Right down the ridge, so this could be a sweet little pocket. I and mean, that's no giant, but uh, that's pretty sweet. And I'd love to find me a white set, especially side by side, so I'll take it. Oh yeah, not in bad shape. Just a nice little set. I love when it makes it easy, find both sides right there together. We'll uh, throw those on the packs. I don't know if I'm gonna be coming back right through here, but we'll throw them on the pack and go see what that other one is. Like I said, I just can't tell if it's a white or a brown, but hoping it's brown, but we'll take a white any day. The other one looks to be fatter. I can't say he had much for tine length, but the other one over there does seem to be fatter. So hopefully it's a little bit older bull. Check that out. Nice side-by-side -side set, we'll take them. Well, we're just around the corner from this other antler. I know it's like right there in that little ditch, but we just found me another one. Little guy, we'll leave it there, hope this one isn't chalk. How cool would it be if it was a big heavy brown? It's right here somewhere, leaning up in some oak brush. Oh, there it is. What do we got, what do we got? Keep your eye out on this stuff. Been walking by them on this trip. Is it brown? Huh. I don't think it's brown. Let's get closer. Chalky. Dang it, heavy bull. I've just, uh, I did a zigzag on the hill that I found my shed on. And I kind of got down the ridge to where I just wasn't seeing any more sign. So decided I'd pull back towards the sign. And lo and behold, right below me, right below a couple elk beds, a uh, right side. Let's see if it's a match. 
looks like it could be the match. Man, this is kind of the edge of the sign right here. Oh man, they beat this up bad. Is that the match? Surely could be, guys. I think it is the other side. Man, I hope so. Always sucks to uh, get in a zone, find a brown single, and have to leave without the other side. So I think this is the other side. It's the side I need. The burrs look similar. So does the color. So let's get a pick up and put them together. Yeah, it sure looks like him, guys. Ooh. Nothing better than a fresh brown. <sighs> Nothing better than fresh browns, except a giant fresh brown. But I'll tell you what, for getting back into this country and starting from scratch, never been here, and just doing what we do, it's, it's kind of rewarding to make a game plan and stick to it. Zigzag these canyons where we've seen bulls. Now we have another brown set to add to the collection. And that's two brown sets for right in here, one white set. Let's get this other side and put them together. I used Onyx to uh, measure the line distance. 243 yards. Yeah. Guys, I will pick up nice brown elk sheds like that all day, every day, and be happy. Even though they're not giant, they're just super fun to find these type of bulls. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, I'm so stoked we matched it up. There's been a couple this year I just haven't been able to match up brown, and it's always kind of a bummer, but when you think 250 yards in this thick stuff, you're pretty lucky to find them both. So I'm super happy. I'm going to eat a snack and get some water, and then uh, we're going to keep working this. I, I feel like he's not the only bull who shed on this hill, but to find the sheds, you really just got to dig them out and grind. So I'm just going to zigzag through here. We got four or five more hours till daylight. Let's see what we can do, guys. We got two sets on the pack already. Let's see what else we can get. <sighs> There's a look at those burrs. Right there. Pretty sweet. Matching set. He's not the only bull on this hill, so let's go find what else shed here. I think that's a tine. I just saw it. I guess we'll walk over to it and see together. Well, that'll be crazy that I missed that. Holy crap, it's a brownie. It's a freaking brownie. I walked so close to that, it's insane. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. Guys, this brownie's freaking awesome too. I don't even know how to act right now, I'm so like dehydrated. But I came so close to that thing and never saw it. But look at that thing. Oh, oh my heck. That's one of the coolest freaking five point sheds I've ever found in my life. I cannot believe that. I came so close to this thing. Yes, yes, yes. Dang, that is a cool bull. Big old freaking devil tine. Ginormous third. Awesome five. I literally saw that much of the tine. And that's insane. Ended up coming on this side and just glassed right over this thing. So we found it though. Awesome shed. Now let's pick it up. <laughs> Holy crap. Look at that thing. Whoa, it's so steep. <laughs> that is freaking a wild five point shed. Look at the third. That third is like mega. And then a big old devil tine. Oh my heck, that thing's like a spider. That's the new spider bull. Holy crap. I need that match. That'd be such a cool match. Guys, I just got off the radio with Braden. He just found a big five point, he said. I just about made it to where my first side was right there. And I decided to cut down and make a new line. And man, I'm glad I did. I just kept telling myself and Braden, like, dude, there has to be another set of browns somewhere in this uh, world right here because there's way more tracks than one bull. So I just found found one of them, left side, check it out. Man, 
I glassed this area. That would have been glassable. And I didn't see it. You just can't glass them all. Oh man, that's a pretty antler. Nice six point. Not far from where this other one was. Probably those bulls I saw bedded. It's probably uh, both their sets. I'm gonna drop the pack and try to find the match. Heck yeah, two, two bulls at least that shed right here. And I get to go find the other side. I'm gonna drop this sucker, drink a bunch of water, and uh, find it. But we went that way, and then I came back this way, and I just found a freaking awesome sixer. Look at that. It honestly could be Eric's match. Like, it really could be. Gosh, the lighting sucks here. There you go. You can kind of see. It could be Eric's match. You guys will know by now because you'll see his before this one, but awesome bull. I mean, just a freaking sweet six point. We found Brown Town. It's crazy. Dang, I already stepped on it. <laughs> Look at that. That's an awesome bull. Just a freaking sweet whale tail on that dang thing. Sheesh. That is cool. That's one of the cooler browns I'm, I've ever found. It's gonna be sad if I have to give that to Eric for his other side, but either way, I'm super happy. That's my biggest brownie of the trip so far. Ooh. Gorgeous brown. Now, uh, Braden said he found a six point after I found this. And he said it had a main beam that dropped, four inch third. So there's a good chance that Braden has the other side of this because mine is the left, his is the right. Which that would be cool because, you know, you find these nice browns, you always want to match them up. You hate to leave way down in here without finding their sets. So I hope that Braden has the other side of this. That would make three brown sets uh, down in here in this country, but, I haven't seen his. It just sure sounds like it's the same bull based off the look, the the shape of the main beam, the small burr, and just the fact that it has a really short third. So, Braden, I hope you got the match, buddy. Haven't haven't had a chance to see you yet, but I'll probably see you at camp. Me and Braden will get these together and we'll we'll see if it's a set, but either way, that's a dang nice one. I think I'm going to do two more zigzags on this hill before I hit the creek bottom and head back to camp, so. Not a big burr. The bull has a really pretty shape to him, so if he can get some age on him, maybe that guy will turn out to be something sweet. All right, we're loaded up. And uh, I was gonna do some lines, but this stuff is forcing me straight down. So I'm gonna hit the creek bottom. And unless I get super lucky, I'm pretty much done as far as like shed hunting and zigzagging and going hard. The next chore is just getting these to camp. Looks good to have some browns on the pack, finally. It's been a long time for elk. I think I just found an absolute giant coos deer shed. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. This is by far the biggest coos shed I have ever found in my life. This thing is mega. Look at that thing. Holy crap. Oh. Yeah, that one's big, big. That one's freaking that next level. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna try to set this up for a pickup, but look at that thing. Too bad it's a little old, but I'm glad I at least found it. That thing's huge. Hopefully that'll do. We'll get this one out of the way. Oh my gosh. Too bad that thing is so dang old. Cause that thing would have been mega. Dang, that sucks, but I'm so happy about that. Oh, I'm steep, steep up here, but. That's just that next level coos. I mean, look at that thing. Freaking giant eye guard. Holy crap, that is actually really big. Here you go. It's big. 
I thought I had good video of it, but grass kind of gotten away. But it's just freaking sweet buck. How cool is that? We meet again. Yes, sir. What a day, huh? Dude, awesome day. Oh, we yeah. Finally found the zone after just so many miles. That drop beam bull's cool. I know. I can't wait to put them together. Huh? Yeah, we'll have to put them together at camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. First time seeing yours, huh? Oh, yeah. Boom, baby. Identical, like that six point is. Yeah, he's a sweet bull. Short thirds, but sweet bull. We'll, we'll get him off the pack at camp and show you guys, but. Heck yeah. Uh, today, today paid off. Let's see where we're at with the Onyx. We're not back to camp. We're already seven miles in. Eight hours and 36 minutes. So, a lot of zigzagging on that part. When we zigzag tight lines, we don't seem to go as far, which is fine with me. Normally, we would have two and a half hour push back to camp, but camp's are right here because we decided to bring it all the way, which I'm very glad we made that decision. So, back to camp we go and Maybe even a half day tomorrow, but we got to eat some food. Let there be life. Oh. We had to uh, work around some little ledges to get down to the water. It's kind of nervous because where I thought there was water, there wasn't. But uh, Braden crossed this up higher and said there was definitely water. So at some point right down here, it like disappears or puddles up because there's none down canyon. I'm out of iodine pills, so I'm gonna risk it all, but this stuff back here looks pretty dang clear, pretty clean. I've gotta take a chance anyways, cause I don't have any more iodine pills, so I'm gonna fill this sucker up before we get to camp, and that way we'll have 48 ounces at camp to chug all night. Well, we were just getting some water, and I look over, and just a huge coos deer. What's it got? Is it together? It's got some beams on it. Oh, there's the backbone. It sure looks together, dude. Camp is 20 yards above them. Looks pretty dang nice, dude. Beaming. Dang, that is a weird tooth. Oh, yeah, it's all beams. What dang, the heck? that's cool. Just a two by three. <laughs> Super good dude, condition, dude. Dude, that's cool. He's all knobby. It's almost brown, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I just barely turned left and missed it. That's the best condition we found. That is a cool freaking coos. It's so curvy, huh? Dude, just that is way sweet. Oh. <laughs> right here in the bottom. Camp's freaking 20 yards up there. Me and Eric just decided to get some water and I look over. <laughs> yeah, that's brown like pretty much, dude. Nice. You don't have to carry out the skull. Heck yeah. Dude, First coos deadhead. One. That's freaking awesome. Man. We got three there. I've got six. That's nine, 10, 11 elk sheds. 11 elk sheds, baby. That's good. We need it today, bad. <laughs> and a handful of coos there. Cool, cool stuff that Braden found. I came across a couple coos, but left them. Nothing special, but that's a solid pack right there. Yeah, we got on the radio. Like Braden, I just. Got a solid six, left side, okay. short third. And uh, I thought he was like one little draw away, but he's like, I think I got your match. Dropper main beam, I'm like, yeah. Short third, I'm like, sounds like him, little burrs. Not a big, big old bull, but uh, dude, he's back heavy. Like these things mm -hmm. wanna roll back. He's got so much main beam. So super cool to get the sets, man. We got two and a half sets off that ridge. Unfortunately, we didn't match up the five, but you really want to match them up when it's early like this before anybody else gets in the country. You, you feel motivated when you find a brown and no boot tracks, you feel like you can match them up. And we were able to do exactly that. So pretty sweet, man. Match them up together. It's killer. Man, you guys saw yesterday, I got my butt kicked. 
I walked out of there with six elk sheds, so that feels pretty good. I think we have three to five hours tomorrow, depending on how much we want to push ourselves. We got a long walk out, like long, long, probably the longest walk out I've done. But if we can find two more sets, I'd be so stoked. Like killer, killer trip. And we probably wouldn't want to find much more than that because the packs would be pretty heavy. All right, guys, we are taking the old brat and tortilla to the next level. How are we doing that, you may, might ask? A can of Chili Mac. Label got burned off, but Chili Mac with some Mac noodle, some other stewy looking stuff. It's kind of a mess, but it sure is worth it. Just like that. Add that to the hot dog, no ketchup needed. Braden and I are just filling up on hot dogs and chili mac, and then I have a premium white chicken fajita. We're just putting it by the fire, and it's actually working really well, just warming that up. And Braden has an extra tortilla, so we're gonna split that on a tortilla. Um, and then after we eat our dinner, we don't have a lot for tomorrow. So we'll take what we have I think we both have like some crackers a tuna packet maybe some candies I have one granola bar and one little orange cutie but uh this is the business right there that's that took it to a whole new level just adding the chili mac tip you need to fold the bottom so it doesn't spill out something like that we're just gonna set the camera up and let you guys chill with the, by the fire with us. Maybe let it roll for a minute or two. And if you like the raw clips that we've been adding in on some of these um, recent shed videos, let us know. Whether it's getting water or picking up an antler or just showing us hiking through. Raw, no music. Let us know if you guys like it. Put it in the comments. Ooh, smoky fire. Can't decide what it's doing. I know. Now it's going straight up. Woo! So good. Just trying to cook a bra, dude. You know you're impatient when you had to take it straight for this cold. <laughs> dude, I'm just hungry. I just want it. Chili Mac for the win. I feel like we just need to start bringing that. Dude, that was no joke. Freaking all the proteins. Makes you more Extra full. Calories, yeah. There's all sorts of stuff you could bring like that, dude. Just put with a freaking hot dog. Yeah, something a little thicker. Like, mm -hmm. probably got like chili, actual chili. <clears throat> Can it be done? Two more sets. I don't know. You're gonna have a heavy, heavy pack already, dude. I gotta get heavy too. Need bigger bulls. 380 plus, imagine. Jeez. 
I don't even know what that would look like, dude. I yeah. grabbed my pants when I found that nice six. Yeah, after you see like these three ten bulls, it's like oh. imagine a three fifty even. Dude. Ooh. All right, time to tortilla up. Feet are killing me, dude. Yeah. Kurt just beat there. How <laughs> <laughs> much more do we have? Oh, plenty. Thick stuff, too. Heck yeah, dude. We can both just Let's dump it. Happy one. Yeah. Let me care. Grab it all. I haven't had to pee in the night once. I've just been so dehydrated. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I wake up more dehydrated. I don't understand it. And I don't even pee. morning ladies and gentlemen it's like 6 30 a.m. and there was no chance I was gonna sleep any longer so I decided to wake up and just slept right here in the dirt <laughs> brains down there in the dirt and uh, we're gonna get up and look for elk sheds we've got a long pack out so I think we're gonna give it five or six hours and uh, see if we can't turn up another couple sheds as if we need the extra weight, but we got the time, so we're going to take advantage of it. Got our butts handed to us on that little hike. Eric hasn't made it back yet, but I made it back. Started getting everything situated so we can have a crazy, long, brutal hike out back to the truck. Well, we tried our luck today close to camp and did not produce. Seemed like we were in good sign, but didn't find anything. So now we got to make the journey out of here. So we're giving ourselves plenty of time to do so. But that's my pack loaded. Got a couple water bottles to fill at the bottom. Braden's got his pack loaded. This optics, trekking poles, and water. We're good to go. So. It's pretty solid right there. This is the new K4 frame. We're slowly making it down to the trail. Whew. Stuff is steep, pretty sketchy. 
but we're getting it. Got my freaking water bottle right there with all my bosses on it. Look good. And now we're gonna get down to this creek bottom and get some water and then head crazy far out of here. But it's been a fun trip. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. Found the brown town finally. Took us a lot of work, but we did it. All right guys, we are back to the city life and the concrete jungle. We're right about to go over what we call the point of the mountain here in Salt Lake, which after this ridge, we drop down into like Draper, Sandy, and you can see Salt Lake and the big Wasatch Front Mountains and all the houses. And after living out off grid for, you know, eight, nine days, it's just crazy to get back to the rat race of the city life. Like people are just driving so crazy on the freeway. But we uh, did a five and a half hour hike out of there with those heavy packs. It was a lot longer than I expected but we got all the antler to the truck. The truck's looking loaded down in the back. And uh, I just wanna hop on here and say thank you guys for watching another episode of Shed Tour. This is my personal favorite series all year. Shed hunting is my favorite thing to do. Um, it's been so fun to share the mountain with a handful of guys already. Shed Tour is just getting started still, so I'm gonna be heading out over the next couple months to some new country, probably find some uh, new spots and make some new friends. So. Thanks again for watching. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you check out our store, gethushin.com. We got hats, the new hoodies are all dropped. Everything is stocked on the website. And again, just thank you for anybody who supports us. Um, absolutely crazy to think that this is, you know, our life. We get to do this for a living. So thank you guys so much. We'll catch you on the next Shed Tour episode.